Okay, it's me or freaking Luis is the other kid working. I can't, I can't even remember that kid's name, but there was like one kid in particular. And I was like, oh my god, this kid doesn't yeah. know what has no clue what he's doing. Yeah, some of those um, new like barely out of high school kids were having yeah, a, a ju- rough time. just like don't care or yeah, just don't yeah. get it, clueless, whatever. But like, it's like you got I'm, you can not care and still do some things, guys. Let me show you the model. Like you can, yeah, you know, exactly. You can, you can do both. Yeah, it's easy to coast. <laughs> you can easily coast through this job. Yes. If you don't want to work that hard, you mm-hmm. know, but like, I'd be like, okay, I'm already in the tease. I'm just going to finish this wall. Yep. I don't care if I have to stay an hour later and you know, yep. Whatever. If they would let me, of course, cause you yep. know how they were always like, hey, go take your lunch, go take oh, your lunch yeah. break. Just they like didn't want any, psycho. they didn't want any of that smoke. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pursuing Pixels. My name's Kevin Portelli, and I'm here tonight with John Hines. Hey there. And Randall Nolery. Hey, folks. And we are back, as always, to talk about some video games with the uh, full trio once again. Uh, it always feels good when we got the whole crew here, I feel. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, to kick things off, sort of not with some video games, uh, John and I have both been uh, playing, well, video games and not it's, video games, sort video of. video game. <laughs> yeah, but J- John and I have been playing a bunch of uh, the new Into the Breach update, which I, I was kind of surprised when I booted this game up again, and I've been playing on Switch, I'm pretty sure John has as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was surprised like the copyright information or whatever on the title screen. I was like, this game came out in 2018. That's totally wild. But the reason that there's this new like advanced mode or whatever update that just came out, I don't know. I don't know if the DLC had any particular name, but like the game got like picked up to be published in some capacity by Netflix. So like if you have a Netflix account, you can play this on mobile or possibly pc as well and they have like a handful of games that are otherwise like for the most part i think they have like 40 or 50 games now actually and they said they're like trying to aim for like having 100 games by the end of the year it's kind of in along the lines of like apple arcade and yeah this this seems like kind of one of the first bigger ones the other big one that they put out the first one that the one that made me realize that netflix had games was a game called poin p Um, that's P O I N P Y. And that's the new game from the downwell developer, which me not having Netflix right now, I'm like dying to play this game. It looks like so bright and colorful and it really does look like almost like, like people are like, Oh shit, he actually made up well (laughs) because you are kind of like (laughs) just bouncing upwards and like going, but it's definitely a different type of mechanic, but it looks like very Mm arcadey and very, it does look at least at a glance to me, it looks a little more shallow gameplay wise, but I think if you just saw some clips, other than I I probably prefer the pixel art style of Downwell a little bit more. But again, this game is like bright and colorful and like neon and like almost like really like juicy. It's more like hand drawn animation uh, for Point P. But nice. that was the first game that I saw that was like, oh, a new game coming to Netflix. And that one's like through Devolver Digital and everything. So it's like they're clearly like making some good partnerships right off the bat. But That has me a little bit nervous because I feel like that's how uh, I was going to say Nintendo, but that's how Netflix (laughs) started with the uh, movies and stuff and the TV shows. Like when they first started putting out their own like Netflix, you know, exclusives or whatever they were called. Um, And they still do that all the time. But I feel like right off the bat, it was like, oh, man, like everything they put out is like almost a must see or something that you probably want to watch where now it's like. (laughs) <laughs> oh, they're just like literally just putting anything with anyone's name on it. Like, a lot of okay, they, you want to make a movie? Yeah. You want to make a movie? And that's not to say a lot, say a lot of fast still... food of, yes. of video yeah. going on yes. right now. Yeah, that's exactly the way to. <laughs> that's a perfect analogy. Yeah, and it's like they're they're still putting out a few things. You know, maybe bringing out a new special onto the menu, Taco Bell style or whatever. Like, Ooh, what's up with that? What's Same up with that uh, burrito like crunch Bell. going on? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. But it's like. OK, but I'm, I'm a little bit nervous because I'm just worried that because I always say, like, I feel like Netflix and, you know, it's, it just is the nature of the way things are going with everything going digital. But like, I really feel like Netflix has played a huge part in kind of like devaluing the artistic process when it comes yeah. to like making films and TV shows and sure. just like, oh, it's content. It's content. It's just there for you to watch and consume at any time. It's like, oh, I just I really exactly i, I and you don't kinda, own any of it like exactly. it can all disappear at any moment yup exactly and it's just like a race to like who can have the thing that who's gonna make the next thing that you need to watch that you need to have oh you gotta have hbo because you gotta watch game of thrones or you gotta have netflix and i'm right. worried that's gonna be like oh i'm sitting here like oh i gotta have netflix because i want to play freaking point p yeah um but 
I am, uh, you know, all that said, I'm very grateful to be digging into this new Into the Breach update because as much as I loved that game the first time around, I haven't ever beaten it, I don't think. I've came, I've come very close. I actually have done like four or five streams where I played for like three or four hours. Wow. And I've only pretty much been playing with the Blitzkrieg squad. I think I tried with a couple others briefly, but I was like, you know, I think we talked about it way back when, when we first talked about this game on the podcast, but like every different squad of mechs basically almost feels like its own game or at least its own set yes. of rules where like once you're familiar with like that's how these three mechs work it's like you just are, are like i don't even want to bother trying to learn this new set of mechanics kind of like how we talked about with dicey dungeons how like it starts like layering in these new rules but where i kind of bounced off that in dicey dungeons like there's so much depth to into the breach oh, that yeah. like and not to say that there isn't in dicey dungeons but for whatever reason it just clicks more with me in into the breach and i'm just like I want to like get every whether it's like getting the coins or the medals or just trying to beat the game with this individual squad. I never actually knew I was always under the impression and I learned this while doing one of the streams. Somebody mentioned like apparently you can like clear two islands and then like the boss island pops up in the middle of the screen. Oh, yeah. And you can go there at any time. And somebody's like, oh, I do. I go for two island victories all the time. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And uh, I always was under the impression because like the first three islands, you can pick between any three of them, like the kind of grasslands or plains, the wasteland area, desert or the like ice area. And then after you clear all three of those, there's a fourth area that kind of unlocks. And I was always under the impression that that was the final area. Like you got to clear these three in any order and then clear that fourth area. So I did try to do a two island victory. So I guess it'd almost be like a three island victory because that last island is like a kind of you know, in, in typical video game fashion, there's like multiple stages to the boss fight kind of. And I, I got pretty darn close, but couldn't quite eke out a victory. But man, I am hooked back into this game. I'm like playing it. I actually like specifically, I just took a trip home back home to Michigan recently. And I was like, I'm not going to bring my switch because this is all I've been playing lately. I'm going to bring my 3ds, which I didn't touch for one second. <laughs> um, I, I played a few things on my uh, laptop. Actually, I made sure to bring my eight bit dough controller so I could nice. Uh, possibly fire something else up. Uh, I forgot what I was even playing. I was just kind of bouncing around and testing out some random games. But uh, yeah, I've I've just been. I, I'm sure we'll kind of go back and forth on this. But John, I know you've been digging into into the breach as well, and I know we, we've both been kind of saying, "Yep, this is pretty much perfect game. Still a perfect game." I I want to put on the record that I think it's so funny because I listened to the episode 17 was the one oh my god yeah this is it has been years so like but uh, on that uh, episode you mentioned how like you did know that you could beat it after two uh um, islands but you were like (laughs) but i'm not i'm not gonna do that i'm only gonna beat it after (laughs) four after i clear all four (laughs) islands so i love the fact that you internalize that so much that you're like that's not even a thing you can do that's a rule, like, for, yeah. which is which is even funnier because I know you were saying the same thing about like when I was like resetting a turn on my stream and yeah. you're like, oh, I forgot you could even do that because yeah. I just like said I'm never going to reset a yes, turn in this no, game. Like I'm only going to I can reset my moves, but I'm not going to reset a turn, um, yeah, which you so get to do funny. once per battle. And I guess briefly we should just say this is like a turn. Ba- if you happen to not be familiar with the game, it's like a isometric turn based grid based tactics game where it's like very bite sized, very chess like in the sense that like you can see like. everything almost it's a, that's like maybe the one gripe I would have especially with some of these new layers that they've added to like the advanced mechanic there can be like so many things on the screen like this tile's like smoking and you have like mites on your mechs and you mm. have like you're stunned and there's a web around you and you can't move. You're just like, what the hell is going on on this (laughs) tile? There's almost like too much to parse at times, but it's, there's enough there. And uh, that's the one thing it like as much as it plays fantastic with the game pad. Once you re-internalize the controls and everything, Mm. but I do feel like it might work just a smidge better if you're playing on PC or whatever, where you can just hover a cursor over something and like, let me just see what this like really snappily, you know, instead of like, doing it with a game pad but it, once you get it down and like again now that i've been playing it a bunch it feels very second nature with a game pad i i do know that like some people play this game like I, I, it's like i like how like you have your internalized ways of how you approach the game and i have my internalized ways of how i approach this game but i do know that there are people who like look each look at each turn as a, pro, a puzzle to solve where they yeah. they will spend 
hours, like just looking at it and being like, okay, Oof. I'm going to make this a perfect turn where no, like I either get no damage or I wipe out every enemy and like, and like they like agonize over like all of those little like interplaying things. And like, usually there is a solution. Like that is how well balanced this game is. Yep. But like, yeah, I, I personally accept a lot of damage or leeway that I'm like, I just need to move forward on this turn. <laughs> I can't, I can't agonize this much, but like, I, I do think it is a, a game that is endlessly replayable because of how many of those mechanics play off each other. And specifically how the like different mech squads like use those to their advantage. Like I played and one of like the 20 different squads. Like, yeah, <laughs> there are maybe not 20, but there's like 18. There's wow. a lot of squads, not to mention the random and custom. Yeah. The new squad uh, that I played a ton with was the heat sinkers. And I unlocked them, but I didn't play with them at all. So their gimmick is that uh, half of them create uh, fire, which was a, there was a, f- a fire to like team in the previous version. But this time, if they land on a tile with fire, they put out the fire and they receive a boost Ooh. to their like damage output. So you're constantly like lighting tiles on fire and then going onto those tiles to get stronger. It's uh it's such a good twist on the mechanic Man. like uh, and there's and there's so many that I haven't unlocked yet. It's great. Yeah, I probably have like 6 7 I, I think that heat sinker is the only squad that I have unlocked on the second page just cuz like the like silhouette of the sprites looked like they stood out way more than the other ones like i was like oh these look kind of cool like they Mm -hmm. look kind of funkier and i was like oh i gotta see what these are all about yeah but yeah i don't know i just i love the pixel art the music is just phenomenal like i can't rave enough about ben prunty like i forgot how often i used to like throw the ben prunty jams on whether it was from this game or from like just like any other of his uh game soundtracks or even just uh like random albums that they've put out. Like, I'm just like, I forgot how much I love their music. Yeah. It's Um, great. Yeah. And especially like, again, while I'm playing like, and the sound design in general too, again, like playing while I'm streaming and having headphones on just like all the little details of like, when you're like hovering and moving, just like tile to tile, there's like the slightest little like, beep, 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 beep. Mm -hmm. Like it's so, Ah, uh, this game's amazing, and I've it's only pretty much game. been playing with one squad this whole time. Like I it's, haven't uh, that's really been like digging into me. the depths. It's just like ah, uh, I uh, I love it. It's so good. Uh, Every I don't know, squad you, has so many different. Uh, it's so great. Yeah. What about Randall? Like way back when we first checked this out, do you remember uh, how you felt about this one? Or I guess John, you just listened to the episode as well. <laughs> I know on my side, I think that was still during the days when we were really trying to play way too many games. For yeah, <laughs> this was like on our list. I think we were like, this is like the game. For, I think it was, it was game a game of the of month. The month. Yeah. Back yeah. Then, like that, that was mattered. a thing on this uh, podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so Went from game of the week to game of the month to me, game of the let's just talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> let me squeeze like an hour someplace in this month to try and play this before we talk about it. Uh, mm-hmm. and, but yeah, like the, everything you guys said was right from my limited experience with it. I really liked it. Let's, I love the sprite art. I'm such mm-hmm. a sucker for sprite art anyway. And I just love the sprite art design. I love these type of like tactic style games um i've always liked that style of game um but yeah just during those days it was just difficult for me to spend that much brain on something that's so punishing even though obviously i could see the, the you know the merits of it even then i just didn't have the time for it and then you know we have this latest dlc and updates but then I see on the Discord where John's, you know, save file crashed after he like re-downloaded oh into the breach. I'm like, oh no! Like, and I, so I was gonna like boot it up, but then I didn't bother. And then it seems like, oh no, maybe the patch fixed that. But then by that point, I was playing something else, and it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I day, think that one day. I think that patch did do something because like after yeah. I downloaded that patch, not only I didn't have any crash situations, yeah. but I did like I was I I activated all of the like new like there's four different things that you can activate. There's like new types of missions, new types of enemies, new types of like a few other things that Equipment you can activate and pilot abilities, I think were the other two. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, I turned all that on. But then like the third or fourth session I had, I was like, there were like all of a sudden, like there was like one or two new enemies the first couple times I played. But then like this next time I was like, holy shit, there's a bunch. There were like these moths and like all these like Ooh. weird, like crazy enemies that had way different attacks. Like I was like, oh man, I got to learn some new stuff here. Like, like you said, it is like a game that you do have to like spend the time with to learn. But then mm. once you do, if you do dedicate enough time to kind of internalize the different uh monsters you know maneuvers and whatnot it's like okay now that i know what i'm doing here and i know how to play with this squad like man you can just lose hours on hours with that game it's kind of got like a bad north kind of vibe like different style game i bad north being more of a real-time strategy but that same kind of feel of like kind of the same length of a campaign you're moving island to island and you're just kind of like you know I don't know. Just awesome. And certainly I could see where it's like a like almost like a Baba is you sort of thing where you're thinking about it when you're not playing it. You know, that that seems like it's very much in those vibes. Right. So it's like uh, I could certainly see the appeal there, too. Yes. And and I forgot how much fun it is just to do the like coin challenges for each squad, because like that's a great way to also learn the abilities of each one, because like they'll be like, oh, we're the Blitzkrieg, like have uh, an electric thing go through eight tiles on one turn. And it's like, how do I even do that? And then you just start experimenting until you can. It's uh, oh, man. So fun. Yeah, it's a fantastic game. And it's really crazy how much like complexity they cram into an eight by eight grid like yeah. there's so much shit going on on any given turn yeah um and so many options you have it's just uh, it's so cool such a great game i'm really happy for this update same um but yeah another game that uh, i actually played a bunch of uh earlier today i did a stream and the stream ended up getting like a little bit chuggier at the end so i was like okay i'm gonna hop off but i ended up just like i was on the discord and i was like you know what i'm gonna do a few more runs i might as well i wasn't like talking or anything but i was like i'm just gonna broadcast my gameplay in case anybody's interested but uh i just recently uh scooped up the uh sock pop super bundle um i think i've mentioned sock pop on the uh podcast in the past they do a similar thing to a uh, punk cake they've been doing it for much longer uh where they release a game every month i think initially they were releasing a game like every two weeks <laughs> they have a little bit larger <laughs> of a team and obviously you can start like once you see some of their games and i've only played a handful of them so far uh, and the reason we actually picked up this uh, bundle, we just hit like our first uh, monthly milestone uh, with our uh, Patreon support and stuff. So I was like, OK, that was our first tier. And we were like, I'm going to buy this bundle basically because I've just been wanting an excuse to buy this bundle. Sure. It's like <laughs> they've released about 95 games so far and uh, the bundle's 200 bucks. So I was like, OK, I just need an excuse to buy this game. And I signed up for their Patreon as well, which is only three bucks a month for the lowest tier. They have a nice. few tiers beyond that. Uh, but at their current tier, or at the, like the lowest tier, you get their new game every month, just like Punk Cake does. But you actually also get one of the games from their old catalog as well. But I was like, there's no way I'm waiting 96 months to <laughs> fill out the rest of that catalog. Because, yeah, they've been just cranking out games for probably four or five years at this point. Wow. And, uh, yeah, they're, I decided to just dive into their most recent one, um, which is called Tile Tale. And it's another grid based uh, puzzle game, I guess. I guess Into the Breach is kind of puzzly in a lot of regards, like the way mm-hmm. you're, it's tactics, but it's definitely very puzzly. But this is like very much like an arcadey roguelike. And I talked about Stacklands actually on the podcast. Uh, I think I'll, I'm going to save it for the cast, but I think I talked about it a little bit with both of you guys because I remember at least, I particularly remember Randall being like, ooh, that sounds interesting. It was more mm-hmm. of like, it was kind of like a deck mm-hmm. builder like where you're like building up cards and stacking them on top of each other to craft things. And this game feels like it's very, it's got a very similar DNA and you start out with like a three by three tile grid. And then you have, it's you're building a deck of tiles instead of cards and you can hold up to 20 tiles in like your hand at a given time. And when the game starts, you have like regular grass and then there's like kind of like a desert wasteland tiles and then forest tiles, I think. And then you have to make like a four a two by two, like, you know, grid or a square to like clear them or a three by two or a three by three if you get them all. But then just like stack lands, there's like a, a sense of progression as well. So like there's a meter at the top and every time you fill up that meter by getting points, essentially, um, you level up and then you get like a buff where it, not necessarily a buff like in a roguelike, but one that you'll get like one of four options, I think, where it might be expand the grid. So now the grid will be four by three or it'll be add a new type of tile, uh, tall grass. And now the tall grass might occasionally have bunnies in them. And if you clear a tile with a bunny on them, you get like a power up, which lets you then clear 
uh, the power ups are either place two of any given tile or place three of any given tile where it'll like and when you slide in a tile, it like actually like pushes it like you're pushing it into the grid from the outside and then it pushes like so you're, you can put it either in a row or into a column from the outside and then it pushes that entire row or column. So if you're if you're putting a tile into the grid from the top left most like from the left side on the top row it's going to push everything in the top row one tile to the right and push the rightmost tile off the grid Mm -hmm. but there's even tiles later in the game if you level up and you get swamp tiles those will actually eat any tiles that have vegetation on them instead of getting pushed over unless they're on the edge like there's all these crazy (laughs) rules and then there'll be like portals that start spawning and portals will spawn enemies that will like gray out your areas so like you don't i don't know if it's you just don't get as many points or like it deactivates them and then some like i had a really deep run the last run i played while i was just playing in the discord and uh, like it got to a point like the balancing almost got to where it was like oh man i'm like almost grinding like i made some like poor decisions maybe along the way and i couldn't rack up points fast enough to where i was like oh man i'm just like and the game just ends when you run out of tiles but every time you make a combo you get more tiles but like the wheat tiles give you more points, but they give you only one tile. So like there, you got to kind of juggle and balance and it takes a little bit of time for your brain to kind of click and go, ah, that's how it, cause like at first I'm thinking, oh, I just want to slide this in here. And then you're like, oh shit, it pushes everything out of the way. And now the thing that I had envisioned is not set up like I thought. So it takes a minute, but I'm starting to feel like my brain is clicking with the way the game works and it controls entirely with the mouse, which, you know, I love kicking back on the recliner oh, yeah. and uh, mouse on the armrest and just like it gets like it, it it very much is turn-based like for example like any animal on a given tile will like only move to a new tile after you've played your turn like it kind of works turn-based in that regard but like you get familiar with like you can see your tiles like what order they're going to be coming up in like tetris style but you see the whole stack so you really can kind of like plan your moves a little bit in advance and you get kind of quick with it it just started feeling so satisfying and like there's even like a little bit of like tower defense that comes into play because you can get like a watchtower building that'll just start like sniping the animals that'll give you more points (laughs) and power-ups but then it might snipe the bees which you don't want to kill the bees (laughs) because the bees bees. will like go from the flower tiles and you if they just move to another flower (laughs) tile you just get five bonus points so it's like there's so many layers coming into play with this game at any given time But at the same time, it's got this like really cute and simple kind of art style. Like everything's like really readable. It's got it. I'm pretty sure it's pixel art. It might be some other kind of art style. I don't know. It's like it just got like a really like fluid art style. Like there's minimal animation. But like when the tiles slide, like the trees like kind of jiggle a little bit as they move over and slide into place. And uh, it's just such a stunning game. The soundtrack's amazing. It's almost got like a little bit of like the. Uh, it's not all mouth sounds, but it's got kind of like that Doug kind of vibe. Like just really, really <laughs> awesome vibes to the music. Like I was just having a freaking blast with this game. Like I'm already like, man, I'm already hooked on their first game. I'm like never going to get through playing all these other <laughs> 96 because I booted up their previous game is called a uh, gardener, I think. And gardener like guard with a shield. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. But it's kind of like a similar game. You play it entirely with your mouse and you start with just this gnome. I was still kind of learning the ropes. It's like one of those games, kind of some of the punk cake games are like this too, where you kind of feel like you have to like almost like learning how to play the game as part of the game. And sometimes you do want to maybe like read the game page on itch.io or on steam or whatever to be like okay how how do i play this game like maybe there's some rules that they'll teach you a few things right on like the description because because they're cranking out these games so fast sometimes they don't have like a proper tutorial or whatever but yeah i'm really digging like a lot of their recent games have had this kind of like low-key like garden kind of vibe but yeah there's another game they put out recently called lucky town which is kind of like a yahtzee tower defense hybrid game with another really cool art style like their games just have such an energy to them that i can't put my finger on but it's i really can't wait to start digging through some of these games and i'd also be curious if you guys uh, ever have a chance or if any of them pique your interest again there's so many of them but i'd be curious to see what you guys think about some of these because they're just so unique just like the punk cake stuff it's just yeah such like one-off one-of-a-kind experiences but for sure. Yeah, I really can't wait to see what their next one is and just kind of follow along with their catalog and whatnot. Nice. 
But yeah, I, I'm not really going to talk about this game, but since I'm talking about pushing and sliding tiles around, uh, I guess I did mention or did want to mention briefly uh, that I've been playing Gora Goa because I know that John has played this game uh, as well. And I was kind of surprised because I was playing it and I was like, oh, John, you would love this game. And he was like, oh, it's OK. Or whatever you had said in the Discord. I forget what your yeah. thoughts were exactly. But I was just like, oh, really? I was surprised that like it didn't really click with you. And again, maybe it was just like I was in the right mood while I was streaming. I haven't gotten all the way through the game. But it's again, it's kind of like the game works where there's almost like similarly to Tile Tale, there's like almost like a two by two grid. And then you're like sliding these images almost more like those. Uh, if you remember, usually they were like a three by three grid and it was kind of like a mini like single panel Rubik's Cube almost. And you would like slide the tiles around to like make the image work and there'd be like one empty tile on the grid i feel like it's in a lot of video games too um like this one but this one you're also able to like kind of professor layton style like click on different things in the image and you may like zoom in closer into the image and then now you're on a new screen and you're kind of like shifting the it's like a very painterly watercolor kind of art style and you're just like shifting things back and forth up and down and zooming in further and kind of lining things up twisting them around like getting certain setting certain like mechanisms in motion and like I was just like again like maybe it was just like kind of the mood and the vibe of you know just figuring things out while I kind of like had the headphones on and whatever kicking back in the recliner because again playing entirely with the mouse uh and it's got a great soundtrack and soundscape and everything but I just thought it was like a really beautiful and unique experience what I've played I've pr- I'm probably about two-thirds of the way through and honestly if my back wasn't killing me I probably would have it felt like it was like oh, I'm like almost at the home stretch but I don't want to push through and like end up with my back just like totally killing me at the end so I was like it's probably better to pull the plug now but it, it is one that I now I'm, I'm almost half bringing it up now because I'm like I want to make sure I finish that game mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what, what were your thoughts? You played it on switch, right? Cause I actually played it on game pass on PC. Cause I was like, I, I got to play with the mouse. I have it on switch. And I was just like, ah, I just, I would rather play it with the mouse. Yeah. I, I really think it's a beautiful game and like genius in how like all of its puzzles like flow into each other. And like, but I, I think the fact that like all the puzzles were kind of very different, like it wasn't like, as yeah. you were saying for like the, you know, Baba's You or the other two like puzzle games we just talked about or strategy games like there wasn't like a language that you apply to every puzzle mm-hmm. and uh, where it's like it each one is kind of its own thing it, in almost like in a mist like way where you're just like poking and prodding and trying to figure out what the rules of this specific one are so like I really enjoyed it but like I didn't have any like satisfaction from like completing the puzzles because it was just like all right I guess that's the solution to this one where it's like I think I would get almost as much enjoyment personally from like watching a speed run of the game (laughs) because then it would just be like a series of like all of these scenes like flowing into each other in like yeah really beautiful and inventive ways but like I I personally like was like kind of frustrated at points where I was like I don't get what this puzzle is or like how to move on to the next one so like that was that was where I like ran into it yeah it's very point and click adventure in that way where it's yeah each puzzle it's kind of its own bespoke thing and it doesn't other than like each individual puzzle might build a couple layers on top of itself but it doesn't like then build to the next puzzle where you're like oh now I can put that together but Mm. I was just a little surprised to see like there were some kind of actiony sequences where you had to like kind of put not actiony but like you had to like really put it together like and like as this like ball rolled down these different panels, you had to like zoom in, zoom out and like line up the tiles in a certain way that like in 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 a certain amount of time where like I was like, oh, I wasn't really expecting there to be like some kind of like physics driven like th- I don't I just wasn't expecting the game to interact in the way that it did in certain moments where I was like, oh, man, that's that was a nice surprise. That was pretty cool. Um, and I guess like, uh, kind of like you were mentioning with the speed running to another game from Annapurna, Annapurna Interactive that I played recently. And I just wanted to give this a shout out just cause I know Randall and I are such huge fans and I know that you are, I, th- I think as well, John, I'm pretty sure you've played this one, but I ended up playing all the way through Sayonara Wild Hearts Hell again yeah. mm. from start to finish on that album mode. Like after Hell you beat yeah. the game, have Still you, have you played this one, that. John? I've I've not played it actually. Ooh. I could have sworn you had we had talked about this on the podcast, but yeah, oh, I guess we've not. talked about it on the podcast for sure. But I, like, I was thinking I'm, you were in on it. Yeah, yeah, I know we've talked about it because yeah, this is probably my fourth or fifth time playing through the game. Like, 
And I think the third or fourth time I've streamed all the way through it. But yeah, there's just something that's just amazing about playing through that album version because you just don't you're not like thinking about like, oh, I got to get all the coins or collectibles or like I want to get a good score on this stage. Do they just even kind of like, Let me just stop go along you? For the ride. Did, does does Queen Latifah even tell you your rank at the end or does it just kind of no. flow from one song to the other at that point? You get like the little kind of brief cut scenes and there might be like yeah. maybe queen latifah says something there's no she you don't get like the ranking or anything yeah like yeah that. it just kind of you get like the little you know how each one ends with like almost like a little vignette yeah and then, uh just kind of rolls right it just rolls right into the next one and like the way yeah. it's like i'm i'm assuming it feels sort of similar to like just listening to the album yeah and like, again the music is just even Fucking just right awesome. from the title screen i'm just like okay yeah, i so absolutely good. love this game and i just like i had cracked open a bottle of wine or maybe it was a box of wine from all yeah of baby I was like, you know what i was like i don't feel like doing a super serious stream tonight i'm just gonna mm-hmm. hop on play some sayonara wild hearts it's again all i forgot i forgot about some of the segments in that game like the parts that are kind of like we were talking earlier when we were talking about vr before we started recording about res and yeah. like there's like those segments where you're like on the motorcycle with the bow and arrow and mm-hmm. you're kind of like aiming at those flying skulls and it kind of targets them res style mm-hmm. and like there ah oh, there's just so many sequences like i kept like as i played through on the stream i kept thinking oh this is getting close to the end here just give a warning about spoilers and i was like oh wait there's still this oh wait there's still this like it was just one even after playing it three four five times it's like still one surprise after another oh, after yeah. another and I, it just still, I'm like, I need to get a physical copy of this game. I need to get my hands on the vinyl. Like, yep. I just, I need to own this game in my household. Yes, <laughs> in some capacity. it's true. It's a tremendous just experience. It's a, it's a multimedia experience, is yeah. what it is. Yes, it's just, I it's just kind it. of, it's, it's kind it's, of amazing to me how much it holds up after playing it so many times. Being yeah. that it's such like a, it's such an experiential kind of game. Yes, uh, but again, since every element of it is so enjoyable and it's just like throwing one thing at you after another. And it's not unlike Gorogoa. You're not like sitting there going like, Oh, this isn't really stacking up. Like I thought there are some levels that like, again, maybe if you're trying to go for like a gold rank or S rank or whatever on every stage that yeah. might get a little frustrating. Yeah, Cause like some of those stages are really tough. But, oh yeah. Um, Cause but there is not, another mode that that'll mess up the vibes. That's not the main reason why you should be playing. I mean, you can I play totally it however agree. you want, but yeah, like I totally a, agree. Yeah, it's about the music. It's about the vibes. And you, you get the things you get and you the other ones you let go. And, you know, there's some of those levels that are a little bit more difficult than other. And that's the biggest pain in the ass is like, like I'm thinking of like there's a level where you're on a motorcycle or whatever and you're going through a forest and like, ah, you just like nicked that tree and now you're restarting that section. And the worst part about it is it restarts that part of the music. So you've yes. lost your flow of the music. And yes. that's so frustrating, right? Because that's, that's really the really only want. reason I ever got mad when I died. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, I'm ruining this song. I'm yes. ruining this song. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because they, yes. they every, again, just like with the stages, I was like, I think this is my favorite song in the game. Oh, wait, <laughs> actually, this is my favorite I song know. in the game. Like, it's just one after yeah. another after another. And again, the presentation, just all like the yes. purples and the sort of like, yes, super slick, low poly. And it's almost like a racing game at yeah. times. Like, it's just. But it's a story oh about like uh, like a lost relationship, like at its core. But they're like, but it's not like super obvious about that. It's all just kind of like interstitial stuff that they're putting around the edges of this like fantastical like world that they've created, and it's it's really good. Yeah, it's ve- and then that yeah, the way like it all comes together during the final sequence, yeah. like as you play through the final song and kind of like I won't spoil any of it, I guess, just in case you haven't played it. And it is like it's just cool how it all comes together at the end. Yeah. Um. But man, just what a game. I I, I can't gush about that game enough and every yeah. single aspect of it. Agreed. Um, so any chance we get, I feel like, why not? Why not throw it in? Oh, <laughs> but man, uh, I might be listening to the vinyl tomorrow. Heck yeah. Uh, that's yeah. just going to make me need it even more. <laughs> Especially now that I'm over here packing up my records. I'm like, what am I <laughs> right? missing in my collection? What's what what do hmm. I need? What do I need? To what add can I make pr- even more difficult to transport? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah. I probably don't need to because I'm sure it's a bulky package, but <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Three vinyls. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. Now I need it even more. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, why don't we toss it uh back over to John? We started off with some uh DLC on this episode, and John's been uh 
digging into uh, probably the, the newest DLC of the bunch. It probably came out right around the same time as the End of the Breach uh, DLC. Oh, but it's got more waves coming. It's uh, oh my god! Oh, it's there's so much. Uh, so I picked up Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, the DLC mm-hmm. for the uh, now PC and Switch game. Well, although I don't think there's crossplay, I'm actually not sure about that. Hmm. Um, but I have tra- my experience with this game in particular, the game that I said was one of my favorite games of 2021 is on track to maybe be one of my favorite games of 2022 man just because that's awesome the expansion is so much it is an incredible game that they've just continuously add more content to and more like fun engaging content to and like i've really it's become the game that like has gotten me into monster hunter and like gotten me like acquainted with it and i I was listening back to again old episodes that i talked about it to see what i was talking about and it was unbelievable to me that i had spent two entire episodes talking about low rank which was essentially as a friend who guided me through my first multiplayer experiences the tutorial of the game (laughs) sure (laughs) naturally so i had an entire game experience playing what amounted to the tutorial before i got to (laughs) high rank and i got fairly far into high rank but I had not completed all of the content that was in high rank, so my level was still, like, getting capped at points. Um, and there was, when I started playing uh, Master Rank, which is what we were getting with uh, Sunbreak, uh, so there's a whole new Master Rank level of weapons and armor and other stuff, uh, but I started playing with uh, my friend and some of his friends, and they like saw my hunter rank, which was capped at forty, even though I my master rank was at like three or something. They're like, "How is that possible?" And I was like, "Oh, I haven't beaten the base game yet. <laughs> I just went straight into the DLC." But I have essentially played this game almost nonstop in multiplayer just matching up with random people online and helping out with oh, hunts nice. and it's it's incredible it's like i i don't want to say it's the way the game should be played because i had a perfectly fine game playing this entire thing solo for however many hours i played through high rank then but like now that i'm in master rank and like kind of caught up to the content i'm like well there's i still have like a lot of farming to do i might as well do it while helping other people beat it for the first time and and that's how monster hunter has been designed like as a series i feel like as since it's like origins in japan and it was such a phenomenon on like psp and like vita Mm -hmm. and stuff back in the day right it's always been that sort of series so that that makes a lot of sense too and like it's amazing how like seamless like i know that like the battles themselves last like anywhere from like 15 to 30 minutes so like they're these huge like multi-stage like encounters that you have where you're tracking down and trying to damage or lure like these monsters in different directions away from people or heal your like teammates and stuff but like it is just so like endlessly repeatable like it's Mm -hmm. a fun time every time and every time that you like meet up with a new group of people and then you're like as as soon as you like take down or capture a monster like the the, like instantaneous where you just get the little thing because like there's a friend rank where that you level up by getting likes from people but like Uh. every single time like it's just as soon as like we take it down instantly like everybody hits like the d-pad in like really quick succession it's just like 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 (laughs) oh that's awesome awesome. it's it's a really good community yeah it's and like there's i'm i'm now in the thick of it like i've 
gotten like oh so many different meta builds for the light bow gun which is my main weapon but now i'm like okay now i can branch out and like really give insect glaive uh a try (laughs) and like oh that's just a like that and uh, all the weapons are so unique and so wild and different in how they control so like insect glaive is basically like pole vaulting with like a grapple hook so <laughs> Did like you use this weapon before because i sort yes. of remember you talking about the pole vaulting thing yeah yeah i i definitely played it i think when i was over at your place and we were streaming it and like i was just trying yes, out yes. new weapons but like that one in particular like if you have multiple enemies that you're monsters that you're hunting at the same time it's so easy to just launch yourself in between them and like kind of like shovel knight like bounce off of one and launch yourself onto the next hell one, yeah okay. which is, is so much different like the control scheme for that versus like okay i'm going to be like 20 yards away with a gun and shooting at it as opposed to i'm just launching myself at these monsters and trying to bounce all over them (laughs) oh it's such a fun game well it's awesome too that you're having fun like jumping online and playing with randos as well like on top of like playing with uh your pals but like yeah to be able to just jump on and play with random people and have a good time like I, I feel like that's never a rarity. For me. Like a, I'm thinking <laughs> right. back to even when you and I played that session. We might have talked about this on the podcast or maybe not, but like when you and I played that new uh, Toe Jam and Earl game and like literally as soon as uh, some random people joined our party, it was like, you can't talk, you can't do anything in that game and yep. somehow they still just ruined all the fun for us. <laughs> just like in two seconds, it was like, okay, yep. what else do you want to play now? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, uh, so that's awesome that there's like a cool community around the game that's just playing to have a good time. I'm sure, you know, as always, you're bound to come across some bad seeds or people just trolling yeah. or whatever, but you know, probably easy enough to duck in and duck out and awesome that you do have some friends to play along with. Yeah, I feel like that's um, especially impressive on Switch too. Like yeah. if the multiplayer is on there. Like that's not necessarily what that console's known for compared to the others. I would say, especially. Yeah. I mean, I I know that Fall Guys is maybe an unfair per- comparison because it's like what a hundred people simultaneously, right? Or Sixty or so, I forget what it is, but it's yeah. a huge amount plus cross platform and all that right. stuff. Yeah, so, like, the frame rate of, like, playing with that many people on a Switch for, like, <laughs> Fall Guys, but, like, yeah, I never noticed any, like, sluggishness when play or, like, any slowdown on Monster Hunter Rise, which is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's awesome, yeah. Even, yeah, I've been playing some random games lately where that have been chugging, and again, I think I've mentioned, like, I feel like my Switch might just be... On its getting, way out. Getting on its last legs or overheating. I mean, I I do use that thing like freaking crazy, so I wouldn't even be that mad. I've I've gotten some mileage out of that thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good to hear that you can play a, like a full blown triple A game that's custom or because it is only on Switch, right? It's Switch and PC. Switch and yeah, um, Switch and PC. Oh man, I this is not a long topic, but there be I think it's yeah. like Capcom thing where they have a bunch of side missions that like you can get outfits if you do them long enough and like some of them like uh have the songs from the games that they're Ooh. the costumes are from so there's literally a uh one where you're collecting rings for sonic costumes and <laughs> city escape okay. is from sonic adventure 2 is playing what? it is the what? weird it is the most surreal thing there's one for like a street fighter costume where like they're just playing street fighter songs in the background it's well at least street fighter makes sense because it's Capcom. Capcom. i guess right. they're just like hey we'll just talk sonic because it'll just be be in anything these and days, I like guess. Also, Mega Man. There's oh my god, it's it's a goofy game <laughs> that I love so much. How is how is like Monster Hunter somehow like the love letter to <laughs> Capcom that Smash Brothers is? <laughs> like how is how is that? It's the it's game that popular. a million people play. Like. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That kind of, I mean, I'm never going to play these games probably other than maybe just, you know, in passing or something, or if I play at your house or something. But mm-hmm. I feel like that does pique my interest a little bit. That just sounds crazy enough to where it's like, what's going on with that Mega Man? There's enough weapons. You might find one that clicks. <laughs> hey, if I can get the blue bombers uh, blaster, maybe I'm, you can, <laughs> maybe uh, I'm in. Yeah, oh, that might be a weapon, but you, you definitely get uh, Rush as a nice. dog outfit. That's <laughs> nice. amazing. Uh, nice. So many people have that one equipped. I always like <laughs> play yeah. with that. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I guess it'd be tough not to for me. I'm sure I would be right there with them. So mm-hmm. oh, too funny. But I don't know. Any more uh, video game chat uh, this week, guys? I'm good. That's nice. it. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, <laughs> nice. Well, uh, yeah, we can wrap things up there this week. And as always, you can find us on the Internet at uh, pursuingpixels.com. Um, and again, we're pretty much uh, everywhere on the Internet. And I get I think I forgot to mention, but thanks to everybody for the uh, support on the Patreon and whatnot for helping us scoop up that uh uh sock pop super bundle and i think we're like getting pretty close i think like after next month we'll be just about to where we'll like have paid off our expenses i'll be able to give randall uh some dough for uh putting down the uh like hosting costs and all the uh various like google drive and pretty much any like random expense we've had randall's just put on his uh credit card and or debit card in the meantime so i think next month we'll be able to fully pay all that stuff off and start chipping away at paying off these microphones. So thanks for all the support, everybody. And uh, yeah, I can really can't wait to dig into more of these uh, sock pop games. I'm sure I'll be a broken record just like I've been with the punk cake stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, at the risk of rambling more than I already have here. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, tuning in and we'll catch you all next week. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>Starting to make builds for them. I'm like doing research. I'm on the subreddits and like <laughs> being like, yes. okay, these are the decorations I need to put into each one to get these skills. I was like, that's yep. amazing. Oh man, in too deep. And I'm trying yeah. to keep my head <laughs> from going under. Some 41. I did. I just found out last week when Randall and I recorded that it's he dead. was also a punk pop punk fan. Like I thought we had talked about that he didn't like Blink 182 before, so I always just assumed. Or maybe that was you, John, that didn't like Blink. Oh, yeah, that's me. Much ever. But like I mentioned like New Found Glory and Rando was like, oh, yeah, I used to love them. I was like, wait, what? How have we never talked about pop punk stuff before? I was in high um, school once, too. That was like my favorite. <laughs> yep. my favorite. I just assumed like kind of like because I feel like a lot of times with you and I, John, just being like a couple years difference, like I'll like I'll be like, oh, you like you and especially a lot of times when we took like drives as a band, I'd be like, man, you guys really all like this and like. I never really got into that. And so I've assumed Randall being a couple of years older than me, I was like, you know what? He probably like missed a few of those and, you know, was too cool for newfound glory. <laughs> I was surprised. Always um, young at heart. Newfound glory yeah. ruled. <laughs> oh, yeah. you liked them too? What the heck, man? I got, yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I was I like Blink and like newfound glory were like the bands that I loved. I, I had the ones that I got from my sisters. So like I was nice. way more into like something corporate and Jack's mannequin. Drive like, through records, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. That was oh, uh, that boy. was like back in the day. That was my dream. I was like, I want to start a record label like drive through. I think I heard they like screwed over a bunch of the bands and stuff <laughs> oh. at some point. I think I don't think it was like intentional. I think it was just like bad. Yeah. Man, you know, just in over their sure. heads and like yeah. got, you know, lost track of it. A record label is a hell of a thing to start. So it kind yeah. of makes God, sense. Yeah. yeah. No doubt about that. <laughs> it probably ju- it probably just kicks off, you know, like you just thought like even Saddle Creek. I think they got started just because they were like put out a bright eyes thing and it was just like all of a sudden people liked it and it was like oh shit we have to like make this official now we have to like make it real